observe that the method used here is the weighted average. So if we, when we are using weighted average, we disregard beginning inventory when computing units of production. So our solution for problem A will be units completed for the period 10,000 which is 10,000 units then we have any inventory units which is 40% completed so we have here ending inventory 1,000 times 40% so that's 10,000 units our equivalent production unit cost for July so that would be in July we have beginning inventory of 21,000 so beginning inventory 21,000 up then production cost of 166,000 for the life, 166,200. So you have 189,200. Cost takes in process divided by equivalent units of production, which is 10,400 <clears throat> your unit cost. So, so continue. The question is, compute the ending inventory of work in process. So, any inventory is 1,040% completed. So, let us see here, 1,000 times 40% completed, that's 400 times our unit cost of 200. So that's our any inventory of working process. And lastly, you have compute the cost transfer to finished goods. While 10,400 is the units, equivalent unit of production, only 10,000 is completed for the period. Therefore, the cost transfer to finished goods is 10,000 times 80 pesos or 180,000. So, problem two, this time. Uh, the method used is first in, first out. Problem 1 uses weighted average. Problem 2, first in, first out. FIFO. So, first requirement is compute the equivalent production for the period. So, letter A. First in, first out. So, when, when we say first in, first out, we consider the effect of the completed units in beginning inventory. So, units completed for the period 100,000. Units completed 100,000 units. Then we have in negative inventory, 9,000 is 70% complete. So, ending inventory. We have 9,000 times 70%, so that's 6,300. And beginning inventory of 5,000 times 40% completed, so that's minus 2,000. So that means this was considered completed in the previous period. So we have 
104,300 units. That's our equivalent units of production for the period. That's our answer there. A. Compute the unit cost for the period. Okay. Here's another difference with FIFO and uh, the weighted average. In our previous problem, aside from the production cost for the period, we added the cost of the beginning inventory. When we use FIFO, since we considered that this was already computed, completed in the previous period, we only use the current production cost. So that means it's 166,880. Sorry, 180. This is our production cost. Correct. Production cost divided by 104, 300. Our EUP or equivalent units of production. And our answer would be. Peso and 60 cents. 1 and 60. So this is our unit cost. Next question is compute the cost of the Indian inventory and working process. So computing the cost of the Indian inventory and working process for FIFO and weight average is the same. So it's Indian inventory of 9,000. 9,000 times. 70% completed times 160. Because our unit cost is 160. So our answer is 10,080. Next, compute the cost of goods completed and transferred to finished goods and vendor. Okay, so that are D. Compute the cost transferred. Okay, so we have beginning inventory, which is production cost. Beginning inventory, sorry, beginning inventory cost is two nine, two thousand nine hundred. Then we have production cost for the period is. 166,880. Then we have our ending inventory cost of 10,080. So our cost of goods completed and transferred to finished goods is. 159,700 Okay, we have here a company that uses just-in-time manufacturing, meaning they don't keep uh, inventories stated and they does not contain ending materials or work in progress and they use backflash costing So our requirement is to prepare journal entries to reflect the March activity. So, to answer, let's refer this portion. Materials purchased and used, 375,000. Since if they don't keep materials, we can just use materials purchased and in process, which is 375. Thousand. Then we have credit, of course, accounts payable. Our assumption is always to take advantage of the credit uh, available to the company. Next, we have to record direct labor and manufacturing overhead or our conversion costs. So that we conversion costs, which is five hundred twenty-five thousand. And credit, of course, various amounts. This data is coming from our 
payroll. Then we have compute the ending finished goods inventory balance. Compute the ending finished goods inventory balance. Our cost materials. 375,000 conversion cost 525,000 so that's 900,000 total cost if you look at here units finish is 90,000 so we finish 90,000 Finish goods in units is 90,000. Therefore, it's our unit cost is 10. So that's 10 per unit. So our ending finished goods. Units finish is 90,000. Units sold is 88,000. So Finished goods, 90,000. Uh, sold is only 88,000. So that means we still have 2,000 in the finished goods. We completed 90,000, but we only sold 88. That means we still have 2,000 units. And our unit cost is 10,000. Therefore, I'm uh, sorry, our unit cost is 10 pesos. So our finished goods is 20,000. The ending uh, finished goods inventory amount is 20,000. So that's our answer in letter B. Compute the cost of goods sold. Of course, unit sold is 88,000. So 88, letter C. This is letter B. Our final answer for letter B is 20,000. Compute the cost of goods sold. So 88,000 times unit cost of 10. So 880,000. This is our cost of goods sold. So that's our answer for letter C. So to complete our Entries, entry 1, entry 2, entry 3. So we have we have to set up our finished goods. So that we finish goods inventory 20,000. Our COGS cost of goods sold 880,000. Then credit this to materials purchase and in process 375,000 and close conversion cost, which is 525,000. So still this is part of letter A, number 3, and to record, finish those remaining and the cost of goods sold for the video.